What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Rock Your Brand podcast. Today, we are going to be talking about Etsy and its changes and what it means for new and seasoned sellers and really what you need to know moving forward. There has been a lot of changes and some people would say they're all bad and I would disagree, but I would say there are some concerns and if you are doing business as usual, uh, it could be a tough road. Uh, the other thing is people that used to be just handmade are really, really upset. The other thing that I want to bring up here today is Chris and I decided that a little bit later, we are going to do something here today on this live stream to hopefully get Etsy's attention. And we're going to need your help. So I'm just going to leave it at that. But we do have something that we feel will or could hopefully will work. Uh, and you can help us do this. So this way here, the Etsy sellers can be heard. There's a lot of sellers out there that are not happy. And what Etsy needs to understand is that without Etsy sellers, Etsy doesn't have a business either. So need to keep that in mind. A lot of stuff we got to talk about here. We also have, we have, uh, what's the other thing we're going to talk about? Oh, Chris, we're going to talk about, uh, the Etsy shops all getting banned or a lot of them getting banned right out of the gate. Uh, we're going to talk about what we can do to hopefully prevent that, or at least give it our best shot. So it doesn't happen and also hear it right from Etsy's mouth. So we're going to dig into that as well today. So we've got some things we're going to cover there. The very first thing though, Chris, that I want to do is I want to dive in here. We've got like five points that we want to cover here because even since a year ago, there has been so much that has changed and the platform seems to be evolving, some good, some not so good. And today I really want to just, I really want to pull out what is happening and what are we going to do about it? So Chris, with that all being said, hopefully I teed that up very nicely so we can dig in. Uh, and I know that the comments are going to probably blow up with this and by all means, blow them up in the comments if you want, because we do want to hear from you and we're going to be asking for you to comment later so we can get your voice heard. Um, so Chris, are you ready to dive in to, uh, well, everything that's been happening, but the, the first thing that kind of comes to mind? Yeah. And bef before we do that, Scott, I know you have five lined out here and I think number, number four and number five is where we're going to have a little bit of a deeper discussion about a few other things, but you know, there's a, a quote that's always attributed to Benjamin Franklin, and you may know this quote, Scott, but I want to amend that a little bit. And the, the quote that's attributed to Benjamin Franklin is there's nothing certain in life beyond death and taxes. And I think the, the amendment that I want to make to that is consistent change, right? So progress, death and taxes. Progress doesn't necessarily mean that it's good. It just means that it's different. And that's really what we're seeing. We saw a lot of changes happening the end of last year, a lot of big things that are going to have big impacts on sellers happening so far this year. And we wanted to just spend a little bit of time talking about what it means for sellers, what those things are, what everybody needs to be aware of, and how you can still make this thing work, despite everything seemingly being. Yeah. 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 So I guess the first thing that we should probably dig into is like the big elephant in the room. And that is Timu. And we did a video and we talked about it in one of our last lives. And we also published a video on it. Uh, Timu is a big deal. And you know, the other night I was watching uh TV and, uh, and a commercial came on, I think it was on, where am I seeing commercials now? I think it was on like Hulu or something. Cause I don't have the Hulu without paid ads, whatever. And, uh, it was, uh, I believe it was Amazon came on with an advertisement saying that 60% of their business success is from independent sellers. And I, I said, to, I said to my daughter, I said, you know, that may be true, but the one thing that I would say that a lot of people aren't aware of, and they're not mentioning here is it probably would have been more like 90%, but what Amazon did, which Etsy does not do. Okay. But now we're starting to see Timu maybe come in is or uh, Amazon, they look at sellers that have done well with a product and then they create something called, you might've heard of it, 
Amazon basics. So they're literally ripping you off. At least that's how I see it. They're going to let you test your money, you the seller, the independent seller, and then they're going to create their own Amazon basics. Have, have any of you purchased an Amazon basics? I'm curious in the comments. If you have, it probably was a product that did well from someone else and they created their own brand version of it. Okay. The reason why I'm bringing that up is because Etsy doesn't do that, at least right now, but they are in a sense allowing companies like Timu to be, well, coming in and selling against our sellers. And I don't necessarily mean directly, but there are people that are using drop shipping. Okay. They're also stealing our images or stealing our products and then selling them and Etsy not doing anything about it. So there are some concerns there. The one thing I would say though, with Etsy that I don't see them taking a seller out by them selling against you. I don't see that, but I do see them not really being, I guess, proactive about companies like Timu that are coming in and they are coming for Etsy, by the way, and they're coming for Amazon too, by the way. So Chris, that's the big elephant in the room. And I know there's a lot of people that are upset about Timu, me included. Uh, I I'm not a fan because I think that it is going to cause a lot of problems down the road, uh, for us independent sellers. So Chris, anything I missed on that, or is there anything we want to bring up on that topic alone? I know we can go for hours on that. I'm sure. And the comments will blow up for sure. Um, and in the comments, let us know what is your what is your uh, stance on Timu. I'm curious. I think Scott, the the point you were just making because we did get a comment from somebody who said I'm I'm closing my Etsy store and I'm going to Amazon FBA. <laughs> uh, well, if you've been hanging out with us for a while, you probably know that we started on Amazon, like we started the e-commerce education stuff on the FBA side of things at the end of 2014, early 2015. Uh, and I'm a fan of Amazon, generally speaking, but thinking that a different platform is somehow going to solve your problem is not a smart life choice. Um, just because you're seeing changes on Etsy doesn't mean Amazon, which is, Scott, correct me if you feel differently on this, a more mature platform in terms of what they offer to sellers and the way that they've treated sellers. Uh, they've already kind of gone through this. And if you look, and I, I am struggling to pull up the stat on the fly here, but they, they, Amazon themselves has a stat about the, the number of top sellers on Amazon that are Chinese based, right? So yep. they're already dealing with some of the team of stuff and Amazon themselves saw some shrinking in the clothing and apparel category in regards to Timu. So I think the first thing people need to be aware of is there is a new piece of competition on the horizon, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's a bad thing or a long-term concern. And Scott, I know in a previous live, you and I talked about all of the different stats associated with Timu and how they really struggle to get second and third purchases. So the thing that we still don't know with something like a Timu or a Sheen is, are they going to be around for the long-term? Or are they just a short-term blip on the radar that has a lot of capital and cash behind it? It's not to say that we should ignore it. It's just we don't know if it's going to be around long-term or if once people start purchasing from Timu, they then come back to places that they've trusted more in the past to get higher quality things. That seems to be what the data is indicating at this point. But in the short term, that's not really helpful to yeah. anybody. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so no. long term, there's there's some hope, but short term, we're just watching some yeah. revenue decline as Timu sales increase. Right. And I, I just want to let people know, like, we're not going to sit here. It's not all doom and gloom, but we're just we're we're stating the obvious. We're also stating a lot of discussion in the Etsy community. Uh, so we're just bringing light to it. But also we're going to be sharing like what we can do about it. And there are some things that we can do about this. So this way here, we still can be successful on this platform. Um, so just keep, keep that in mind. Um, but again, if you have any thoughts on any of this, drop it in the comments, do us a favor as well. Uh, this is going to be a very important video and you're going to see why here a little bit later, because we are going to do something to help Etsy sellers be heard by Etsy. Um, we have something planned, so stick around for that, but make sure that you like this and make sure that you drop any comments that you have on what your feelings are on Timu. All right. So yes, uh, I think Timu is coming after everyone. They want to be the Amazon. Okay. That's what they want to be. So it's not just, you know, Etsy being attacked. 
or Etsy sellers. I will say this though, for anyone that is thinking, well, I'm just going to go over to that platform, Amazon FBA, let's call it. Chris and I have experienced, uh, you know, plenty of brands on there. We've built our own, uh, but uh, the grass isn't always greener on the other side. And uh, let me just say this, if you are going over there, here's what will happen. I'll just, I'll say it right here and I'll say it right now. You will most likely go on there. If you get a product that does well, you're probably going to have hijackers and hijackers is a big deal. And then what happens is when you run out of inventory, the hijacker takes over the listing. It's not your listing, by the way. It's the product catalogs listing. I'm not going to go too deep into that, but I'm just saying there are problems over there as well. Trust me. We know. We've been there. We've dealt with it. And if you want to go do a little Google search of you know, Amazon listing hijacking, you'll see it. It's been around for years. It's still happening. And uh, yeah, it's going to continue to happen. And what happens once you get locked out of the buy box, now all of a sudden you're sharing your listing with other sellers on your product, even though you're you're the one that created it or branded it. Um, so anyway, we're not going to go too deep on that. So that that's the, the, the first one. That's the elephant in the room is, is Timu. All right. The next one that is a big deal, and this is, this is somewhat recent, is they announced Etsy that they're going to start allowing, uh, you know, China, uh, to have payments, uh, a payment form. So this way here, uh, you're able to, you know, make those payments and accept those payments. What does this mean? Does this open the door to China? Kind of seems like it. And we did a whole video on this already. So we're not going to go too deep into it. Chris, like, what's the big deal about this? Like, why, why, why is this a big change? And what, you know, what would make you think that this could be an issue moving forward uh, for Etsy sellers or something to be aware of? Let's say that. Yeah, I think I think the biggest thing is just the increase in potential competition. And if you watch the the full video that we did on this, we did a full breakdown of exactly what's going on. But basically, Etsy, I almost said Amazon because we've been talking about Amazon. Etsy added China to the, the countries that can use Etsy payments via Payoneer. And I think some of the other ones are like India, Pakistan, some of those kinds of places that aren't traditionally supported by the platform, right? That weren't traditionally part of Etsy Pay. And now that we're seeing the ability to do that, that is a signal. They're not outright saying like, bring it on China, right? But that is a signal, at least in my mind, and Scott, I think you would agree with me, that they're going to start more aggressively onboarding sellers in China. Because we saw the same thing happen when they started to bring uh, India into the, the Etsy payment fold, uh, Pakistan into the Etsy payment fold, right? As they're starting to bring people into the ability to accept Etsy payments, it is opening it back up. And it's not something that never happened before on Etsy. They used to sell pretty well on the platform uh, in the early days. And then Etsy made some changes. They weren't part of Etsy pay. Now they are again. And this is something that happened inside of the terms of service a few weeks ago, what we haven't seen at this point is a huge rush. But the thing that's interesting here to me, Scott, is they're pairing this alongside some of the changes in the onboarding process. So what, what we still don't know is if those changes are going to prevent the worst case scenario from happening, which is basically, you know, every the assumption that everyone has is that as soon as you open it up to China, everybody that has a factory or knows someone who has a factory is going to ramp up an account. They're going to do as much handmade uh, print on demand type products as possible and flood the market. Or they're going to you know, sell Disney and Miley Cyrus and Taylor Swift merchandise on the platform and violate the copyright rules, right? What we don't know is if the combination of the new onboarding process and that ability will, will kind of curtail that. Um, or cut that down, right? But the the thing that is concerning for most sellers is just that massive increase in competition. And Etsy is going to couch this as, hey, we're opening it up to a billion new people, but we're not necessarily going to be selling products into that market. All that really does for existing sellers is add potential competition. Does that make sense? Yep. Yeah, no, I, I'm glad that you broke that down because I mean, I just see it as like, okay, they're opening the door, they're inviting, right? And I'm fine with inviting, but we've got some issues that need to be dealt with here. Uh, and, and I think the platform still has a lot. We, we said this in the, in the last video that we did. It's got a lot of holes in the bucket, 
you know, still. So we, we need to, we need to sure them up, um, which we're going to talk about that too. Like, uh, people's shops that are getting banned, like almost immediately. Um, we're going to actually go through what, what, Etsy is saying that they're going to do about it. So stick around for that. That's going to be one of our segments here coming up, but we need to make sure that we're aware of these changes. And does it make it as though I don't want to sell on Etsy anymore? No, not at all. I still think it's a great platform. We just need to be aware and be prepared and also do it differently. If you are just going to throw up a t-shirt, throw up a mug, probably not going to work. Right. If you're going to try to build your entire business on Etsy because it's going to be your full time gig, probably not a good idea. Stick around because we're going to talk about what is a good idea and really a strategy that you could use Etsy as a launch pad. And then you can go ahead and build out your business. But we'll talk about that here uh, shortly. But let us know in the comments if you guys are just joining us. We've got well over 319, 322 people now. So we got a bunch of you on here and uh, we want to hear from you guys. We also have something coming up that Chris and I are going to be doing here. So this way we're going to be able to hopefully get the attention of Etsy and the CEO, Josh Silverman. So stick around for that. We're going to need your help on that. Like this video if you haven't done so already. Comment on this video. That'll help us reach more people. And that's what we want to do here so we as sellers can have a voice. All right. So with that being said, Chris, let's move on to the next one. This is another biggie. Okay. AI. AI. Love it. Hate it. It's here. Okay. And it's here to stay. It's only going to get more and more advanced. Uh, we won't play it, but Chris literally this morning created a, a song, a theme song for us, just as a joke for me. And uh, it took him like, like I think he said like two minutes, not even two minutes. Thir right. 30 seconds. Thir 30 seconds. You know, it may, may, maybe one of these episodes, we'll, we'll play it for you. Um, you know, but it was, it was a rock song about our podcast and about Chris and I. That's AI. Like AI is incredible right now. And I think it is incredible. And I think there's a lot of opportunity there. But the downside is, Etsy right now is being flooded with AI. Am I the only one seeing it? Am I the only one seeing it? Now, does that mean that I wouldn't use AI? No, my, my wife actually is using AI and using it for elements in the design, not creating the entire design. Or if she is, it's going to be, the bulk of it is all going to be created through the prompts that she's using or the different elements that she's using. So making it her own. I think there's a place for it, but I also think that there needs to be some type of rules and regulations inside of Etsy that's going to help prevent someone just going on there and just slapping up a whole bunch of products on a whole bunch of t-shirts. It's just going to flood the market and Etsy platform and make it really just, I guess it, it cheapens the platform. That's the, that's the word that comes to mind for me. It just kind of cheapens it and makes it Someone just said in the comments, it's turning more and more into eBay. Kind of. I mean, eBay is still a good little platform, but I, I get what you're saying. Um, so whenever you start doing this stuff, you know, it, it is going to bring in more opportunity, but also brings in more opportunity for people to abuse it and just, you know, start putting up crap. Uh, okay. So um, that's the other big one is AI. And I, I'm just curious in the comments, is anyone here uh, using AI? right now in their designs. I'm just curious, drop it in the comments, let us know. Um, but Chris, what, what's your, I guess, what's your take on the AI thing being flooded and, and with Etsy and should this, should this be something that we're uh, concerned about? Yeah, I think concerned in terms of AI taking over is a different conversation, right? But I think one, two, and three, Scott, really combine into one big point. So talking about the in you know incoming flood of Timu, the potential onboarding of everybody that wants to sell anything from China and AI. Uh, we had somebody in the comments, and I want to see if I can pull it up really quickly, uh, who said exactly what my point was, which is basically, you know, it's impossible to compete on price. This is what happened on Amazon. Uh, and it became impossible to compete on price. I think that's the, the gut reaction that most sellers have when they think about those three things. And I know we're going to cover this here in a little bit after we get through all of the changes that have happened over the last few weeks. But those three things really, to me, are about competing on price. And the immediate gut reaction that most people have is, oh, my God, I can't sell things cheaper than someone from China, or I can't sell things cheaper than someone who's using AI to design it, or I can't sell things cheaper than something that's being manufactured on Timu. 
And while that might be the case, that's not necessarily something to be discouraged about. So that's the the one piece of like optimistic uh, thinking that I wanted to inject here before we get into the other two. And it's something we'll cover as to why you don't need to be as worried about that here in just a little bit. Yeah. And just to be clear, we're talking about AI for images and for design. We're not talking about AI in general. I mean, we could go into that and say, well, AI is now helping you write better copy for your listings. Great. I'm a fan of that. It's helping you come up with product ideas. Great. I'm a fan of that. Uh, and I'm a fan of AI. I really am. Uh, I, I still think that it comes down to the prompts that you're using. And I think someone even just said in the comments, like, you know, they're using AI, but they find it hard sometimes to find the right prompts. That's part of being the designer, right? Like that's, that's part of the design skill now is like prompt design, right? You're, you're, you're designing with prompts. Um, so that's another skill that you're going to be learning now. It's not just about how you can paint or how you can construct something in Photoshop. It's how well can you construct a good prompt that gives you, uh, what you're looking for. Um, so just to be clear, we're talking about AI for images and people just, uh, and, and someone said, Chris, I haven't heard of this, but someone said in the comments that there's a tool now that someone created that's going out, finding well, or, you know, uh, good selling products, copying it, cr changing the design a little bit with AI and then publishing it. Like, that's what we're talking about. Like that's abuse. Like that is not what Etsy was designed for. Not even close. So yes, I can see that as being a problem. And that's something that uh, I do believe that Etsy is, is going to have to pay attention to, which leads me into another big thing that's been happening that did not happen in the past. And I would probably say for the last six to eight months, shops are getting banned very, very, very quickly. Like we're talking sometimes within 24 hours, you open a shop and then boom, automatically it's shut down. It's banned. If that's happened to you, I would like to know that as well in the comments. If it has, let us know. Again, hang tight. If you're just joining us, we are going to be doing a full segment on that here coming up. And we're doing it in a way that we're hoping to get the attention of Etsy. And you guys can help us do that. And we'll share exactly how here in a minute. But let's move on to the fourth thing that we wanted to share. And that is accounts getting banned very, very rapidly without even an explanation other than the template that gets sent out to everyone. And that could be, that could be the reason why they are getting, or they're uh, banning accounts so quickly because they're looking at it like there's a lot of these requests coming in and we don't want these, we don't want all these new Etsy shops. That could be it. We don't know, but they could be saying that, or they could be saying, well, we're going to have an AI bot that basically looks at the incoming of all of these new Etsy shops. And if something is a little bit off, boom, we're just going to strike it. I don't know, but I do believe it's probably a bot. It's probably a bot that's not been fine tuned yet. Um, but I do believe it has to do with the influx of new sellers. Uh, and again, we will dive deeper into this in our next segment. We have a, a whole segment lined out that we're going to do that will be on this and we'll read exactly what Etsy is saying about this. But that's another big one that a lot of people are being frustrated with and not even just new sellers is there's, there's sellers out there that have gotten banned that are top 1% sellers that are doing hundreds of thousands of sales and getting banned um, for ridiculous reasons that could have been prevented um, if we could just get in touch with Etsy. Um, but more on that later. But the big one is, is, is shops getting banned early. Um, and again, hang tight because we're going to go through what Etsy is saying to do to make sure that you have the best chances of getting your account uh, active. Um, so Chris, what do you want to say on that? Or did we have any comments on the, uh, the accounts getting banned like rapidly? Yeah. So we saw a big spike in this and Scott re remind me, was this like October, November? It feels like it feels like years ago at this point, but it was like September, October, and November, some point, the beginning of, of Q4 last year where we had the, the, the mock-up apocalypse, uh, where everybody was saying, oh, you can't use mock-ups. And that's why all of these suspensions are happening. And it, it turned out that, yes, uh, you know, according to Etsy's legal department, you can use mock-ups as long as they accurately represent the product. But it seemed like they were going through and automatically suspending a lot of people and pulling, you know, it just, it started to kind of get out of control. 
And they seem to have reined that back a little bit and focused it more on new accounts that were being suspended. And even if all your payment information matched, once you created the account, for whatever reason, they would just say no, and then you'd never get a response from anybody. So it went from you got an email with a reason, even though the reason wasn't actually valid, to now basically every account of this that I see, people are saying, I didn't even get an email from Etsy other than the one that said, hey, uh, your brand new account, the first time you've ever created this, you've never done anything in the past, uh, you can't sell on the platform. So that to me feels like AI gone wild. Hopefully with their new onboarding process, uh, we'll get a lot of cleanup of that. And I think the reason they got so aggressive with it is they were seeing more and more and more spam accounts. So anything that tripped one of their red flag indicators in the AI was just being shut down. And their answer to that seems to be, you know, the, the $15 onboarding fee, some of the things that they've rolled out over the last few weeks for new sellers. So hopefully uh, we'll see that. And somebody in the comments had said, but there must be a reason like they were previously banned. You would think, uh, but you would also think that if there was a reason that your account was suspended, that they would tell you, or at least do the uh, the uh, the Facebook thing, Scott. And I know you're such a huge fan of the way that they respond when they close things down, where they point you to like three giant yeah. paragraphs inside the terms of service where they're like, it's one of these three things. Like I would take that over, yeah, you just can't sell on the platform anymore. Yeah. Um, even though you've never sold anything here and it's literally impossible for you have uh, for you to have violated the terms of service because all you did was create a seller account. Yeah, no, I know it's, it's, it's frustrating. I mean, without a doubt. And I mean, we get a ton of comments coming in here on, on the reasons like my shop got permanently banned without prior warning. Um, just getting, just getting, uh, sales. Uh, and who was it? Was it, um, where was that? Uh, I just wanted to read that because it was, uh, no, I'm not seeing it. A lot of comments coming in. So keep them coming. Um, but yeah, basically it was like, once you like if you open your shop and you get one sale and then they verify your banking and you don't do that or something is misaligned that's when boom red flag um so i've seen that happen as well but uh that that's a big one you know it's not lining up the banking and Ale alicia pointed out and this is why i brought up facebook as the example the reason they don't tell you is because that actually opens them up to liability uh, mm. if they give you like a very specific reason, but that's the same reason why Facebook goes, it could be one of these four things, right? Yeah. At least that's almost helpful as opposed to, yeah, you just can't sell on the platform, even though it's impossible for you to have violated the TOS because you haven't yeah. done anything except for create the account. Yeah. Okay, cool. Let's keep moving. We got a lot more to cover. And if you guys are just tuning in, stay with us. Uh, we are going to be doing something here in another segment, um, that we're hoping to get Etsy's attention. Um, because we really need to be heard as sellers. And this is a big deal for a lot of sellers and big sellers that have been shut down without warning and just basically no one to talk to, which is mind blowing to me that you can have a hundred thousand plus sales and you can't talk to someone. We need to fix that. And we have a plan to do so. So stay with us. We're going to need your help though. Okay. So the last thing that I wanted to bring up that is one of the, one of the big things that I'm seeing and the changes, which is, it's kind of sad, but in the same breath, it also opens up more opportunity for you or I that stays on the platform. There's a lot of sellers that are just leaving the platform. I mean, I've heard several people just here in the comments just now, since we've been on that said, yeah, I'm going to Amazon. I'm going to eBay, right? Like wherever. So I, I understand the frustration, but there still is an opportunity here. And yes, it can be frustrating, but it's going to be frustrated over frustrating over there too. It's going to be frustrating. Even if you have your own Shopify shop and you're trying to drive Facebook ads and Facebook ends up flagging you and you get shut down and you can't talk to anyone because you're a small account. <laughs> you know, there, there's going to be something else there in the journey. You're going to have another pothole. All right. You're going to go down the road. It's going to be smooth. You're going to hit something and then you're going to get a flat tire and then you got to get the tire fixed. And guess what? You're going to drive a little bit. Something else might happen. Radiator might go uh, brakes. What? Like you, you get what I'm saying. There's always going to be something there. You're in business. You're an entrepreneur. This stuff is going to happen. I've been doing this now for 20 plus years. It doesn't matter what niche I'm in, what products I'm selling. There's always going to be issues. Okay. There's always going to be issues. Okay. So it's just, we have to deal with them and we have to look at this as yes, this is 
this is a problem or there are more opportunities coming in for these other things to come in that could be bad. But it also, there's also opportunity. And I would say that Etsy does appear to be wanting to promote the, pl the platform to turn it into a gift giving platform. They're running commercials. I just saw another one yesterday that I hadn't seen before. They're running more commercials. They're trying to bring awareness to it. Okay. But yes, it is frustrating, but that's the other thing that we're seeing. That's the fifth thing that has really changed over the last 12 months is there's a lot of sellers that are just shutting the doors and saying, bye-bye. Like that's it. I'm done. I'm not messing with this anymore. They're not doing anything for me and I get it, but hopefully we can get our voices to be heard. That is our goal here today. We are going to try like heck to get our voices heard. Stick around. Like I said, we're going to be doing something here that hopefully will help in this. Okay. Now, if you've had thoughts of leaving the platform or if you've opened a shop and you've been banned, let us know in the comments. Okay. Just let us know there. The more that we can show Etsy, the more that we can hopefully get their attention. All right. So Chris on the sellers are leaving, not much to really discuss there other than there's a lot of sellers leaving. And I mean, sellers that have been on the platform for 10 years doing well and just taking their business somewhere else. I'm not saying they're going out of business. They're just taking it to another platform or their own platform, uh, Shopify. So anything else there, Chris, that I missed? Yeah, I think I think it's really those first four things, Scott, that are leading to thing number five, which is sellers leaving the platform, right? Increased competition, the fear that you can't compete on price, and Etsy seemingly going off the rails in terms of compliance enforcement, in terms of service enforcement, banning accounts, not going after copyrighted things, trademark things, right? People are getting to a point where they are frustrated. And it feels a lot of times like Etsy isn't doing anything for sellers, even though a, a couple of weeks ago we talked about the vital few initiatives that Etsy has for 2024 and everything that they're doing moving forward to help sellers and help buyers, right? Like the, the positioning to being the go-to place for gifts that theoretically will help sellers long term. But in the meantime, it feels like everything is against people who are on the platform. And that I think is why a lot of sellers have said they are leaving, right? If you get banned or you get a suspension that you feel is unjust, you automatically go out and start looking for other ways to shore that up. And when it happens to bigger sellers, like I think, uh, Scott, who was it? It was a, another YouTuber who had his shop suspended that does a couple, a couple hundred thousand dollars a year, uh, over an $8 charge on a different account. Uh, I think yeah. that's what it was. Somebody correct me in the comments. I'm sure, you know, I'm getting some part of that story incorrect. But I've it was got some of that story in the next segment, Chris. Yeah. Oh, that I did not know. Cause it's not in my notes. Um, but you know, it's, it's one of those things where it's like, okay, you know, here you have somebody who's advocating for the platform they have something, right? They're, they're a very successful seller. They have something that's totally avoidable by, I don't know, triggering an automatic email saying, hey, would you please update yep. your debit card yep. on the account? And instead you shut down every account that he's created, even though he didn't actually violate terms of service. If you know all those accounts are connected, just take the $8 out of this account <laughs> and, and pay for it. Like if it's that big of a deal, you have access to the money clearly. So just move the money around and pay off the eight bucks and then say, hey, like go settle your balance or whatever. But it's those kinds of things where even though Etsy publicly is doing a lot of things that should drive more traffic, should create more customers, should create more long-term sales for sellers, and they are improving the seller experience, as long as something weird doesn't happen, there's so many weird things happening right now that it feels like they're not doing any of the other things. Yeah, no. Okay, so let's end this here, okay, this part of the discussion. Let's end this here with some light at the end of the tunnel. Okay. I mean, I think we would all agree we're still playing on someone else's playground that brought everyone together, right? They brought in the crowd. Okay. It's like you want to be a musician and you want to play in front of a crowd. It's traffic, right? Well, if you want your business to get traffic very quickly, you're going to go to a platform that's already got traffic and Etsy has traffic. So we have to look at like, there's a lot of opportunity that they're giving us access to. Okay. Is it becoming harder because of these certain things? Yes. But it's also because of the other things that we just talked about. So here's how I see it. This is kind of how we've been doing it from day one anyway. 
Okay. The very first thing is, and this is, it's funny how we started talking about this probably around probably two years ago, uh, at least a year and a half that it's like, you need to build a cohesive brand. Okay. So step one in this whole thing is, is find a niche that you can build a brand around. Okay. That's number one. So let's, I'm just going to use the obvious one weddings. If you were in the wedding niche, that would be your focus. And then you would have your products all focused around that buyer. Okay. And the things that would go along with the wedding. If it was in, uh, you know, maybe it's, uh, I don't know, maybe it is into dogs, right? Well, then you're going to go into all of the different stuff for the dog. Or if you're going to go into horses, it's going to be everything about the horse lover. Okay. And they're giving us these ideas now, by the way, if you haven't noticed with the gift mode, they have all of these different, these different, you know, uh, horse lover, you know, uh, travel lover, right? Everything is that because that's what they want you to go to, uh, to, to find because they want you to shop for the person that you're buying the gift for. That's their main goal. Okay. So if you think about it and you're like, okay, if we do this, we use Etsy as a launch pad. Think about it as a launch pad and another channel. Okay. That's how you start. And that's how you think about it. The second part of that is, is building out products, a product line that one customer can buy now and in the future, and maybe buy more than one. They add more to their cart. It still blows my mind that people are saying, I'm just going to be a t-shirt company and I'm just going to put a whole bunch of funny sayings on it and just launch t-shirts. It's not going to work. I'm going to be the first one to tell you it's not going to work. Sorry. Okay. I'm just going to, I'm going to talk truth here. Okay. Not going to work. Uh, and if it does send me an email, let me know that it worked for you. And I will applaud you and I will ask what the heck you did to make it work because it's probably not going to work. I would be shocked. Okay. Um, so focus on a brand, building a brand in a niche, building out products of different items that that same customer would want to buy today and maybe in the future. Okay. Cause that increases the cart value now. And it also gives more opportunity for someone down the line to buy more. Okay. The third piece here is building an email list. We've been talking about this for years as well, whether it's on Amazon, whether it's on Etsy, your own Shopify store, it doesn't matter. Building the email list. I have a friend right now who built an email list of about 6,000 people that are, some are interested, some were buyers. Okay. She sent out two emails, which by the way, I told her she should have sent four and she would have sold more, but she was afraid she was going to get her account shut down because she had, uh, wait for it over 400 sales from sending out two emails. Okay. Um, and the reason why she didn't want to get more sales is because she's heard that people get shut down, suspended because Etsy looks at it as it could be fraud. Okay. But that's the power of email. Without the email list, you don't get that 400 sales of people that maybe purchased before, maybe haven't purchased yet, send out a little promo, and now you you send out two emails and you get 400 sales. Now, I'm not saying that's typical. That's that's really good numbers. Um, but even if you sent out one email and you generated an extra 500 bucks, an extra thousand bucks, what would that be like? I'm curious too in the comments, how many of you are using email right now? Let us know in the comments. That's another big one because that email list. Okay. Is yours. You own it. And so everything that I just went through, you've just built assets. Okay. You've number one, you focused yourself on the one niche that you're going after. Okay. If it's the wedding niche, it's the wedding niche. Okay. Now you're building your product line. Okay. That's going to serve that customer. Well, guess what? That customer is, is other places. It's not just on Etsy. You can now focus all your energy on those products and in that market. And then you can move it over to Shopify. You can literally take a plugin in Shopify and pour everything over. Well, now you have your own entity, your own property. And then your email list, guess what? You got that too. Okay. So that's how you're going to win at this Etsy game. Okay. You're using Etsy as the launch pad. You're using it as an external channel. And it is going to be way easier to do that than it is to start a Shopify store. If you start a Shopify store from scratch, you're going to have to get your own traffic. And that's not easy. 
Okay. Getting your own traffic is not easy. Using paid traffic, hard. On Etsy, easier. Okay. So that's what we're looking at as far as if you're going to do it, that is the road. We actually have been teaching it this way from the beginning. We have a class that we teach. It's called one, two, three pod fast track. That's the model. Find the niche, build product line, build email list, launch on Etsy. That's it. Okay. So we've been saying this for a long time. I would like to know how many of you could say that you are building a brand that could live outside of Etsy. I'm curious. Drop that in the comments. Chris, did I miss anything there before we wrap up this segment? Two things. First of all, I, I'm having a little bit of deja vu with this conversation, Scott. It feels a little bit like 2017 when we had to have this conversation about Amazon, yeah. right? And about making sure that you're not 100% dependent on Amazon. Yeah. And I wanted to bring up a comment here from Elephant in the Room, uh, great YouTube name, by the way, who says, I'm sick of YouTubers scaring Etsy sellers. I think there's a difference between scaring Etsy sellers and having a frank and honest conversation. I think, Scott, that's what we wanted to have today. Because to ignore what's going on yeah. is doing a disservice, yep. right? To pretend that, oh, yeah, it's just, it's over there. Don't worry. Yeah, people are getting shut down, but it's not ever going to happen to you yeah. if you're following terms of service. Well, that used to be the case. And now even people who are following terms of service are having issues. And I get that there's growing pains. I get all of that. But we need yep. to have a frank conversation about it. We're not saying this is the end of Etsy. It's all over. The mm. sky is falling. Etsy is not viable anymore. That's actually the opposite of what we're saying. But the thing I want everybody to take away from this is that you have to do this a little bit differently. We've had this conversation more gently a few other times, Scott, where we started to say, look, uh, you need to pay a little bit more attention to this. You need to move towards branding because that's where Etsy is moving. And now with the five things that we talked about, Timu, China payments, AI, right? Everybody's focus is around being competitive on price. And if you do the three things that Scott just talked about, if you start by building a brand in a niche, you focus on creating the long-term customer value, and then you move off of Etsy and start building your own website, you're no longer a slave to that lowest price cycle. And Scott, people ask us all the time how we make the margins that we make in our Etsy shop competing on Etsy. And the answer is we don't compete on price. The way that we're able to not compete on price is by doing those things. People who have purchased from you in the past are extremely likely to purchase from you again. And if you can get them on an email list, they're even more likely to buy from you. And since they're not looking at Etsy search, they're going directly to your shop or directly to whatever listing you're directing them to. They're not price sensitive. Now, obviously we don't want to sell a blanket for $400, although I would love to, we still want it to be reasonable and rational, but we're able to avoid playing the price game because we get people who like us as a brand and not just the person looking for the cheapest thing. Just ask Kmart how the long-term strategy of being the lowest price uh, opportunity everywhere worked out for them. Oh, wait, you can't because they don't exist anymore because Walmart ate their lunch and then Amazon came in and ate their lunch and then Timu came in and ate their lunch on being the lowest price option. Competing on price is never a good choice. And that I think is where most people, Scott, correct me in the comments if you feel differently, guys. That's where most people are having that initial heart attack of, oh my God, all these things are changing. And then you layer on top of that, all the weird stuff happening with accounts getting banned and sellers leaving, right? And it's like, this isn't an opportunity anymore. The opportunity is absolutely still there. You just have to change how you're approaching it and make sure you're doing the real long-term business brand building things, which really are not that difficult while using Etsy as the backbone for you to be able to do that so that you don't have to learn how to build your own website right away. You don't have to learn how to master Google traffic, Facebook traffic, TikTok shops, all of these other places. You can start your business in a low friction way using the traffic and sales built into the Etsy platform. And then as you have the capital to learn these things, as you start to add in the skills of building an email list, learning how to send emails, then you can add in building your own site and make sure that you have a strong place to be long-term. Yeah, no. And, uh, you know, it's funny, uh, you know, someone had said something like, something about like, you know, like you said, like the Etsy gurus, and I don't look at us as an Etsy guru, right? We're just, we're selling on Etsy and we're sharing, trying to be helpful. Um, and uh, I think someone was like, you know, uh, you can stop scaring, right? And using clickbait titles, okay? Here's the deal. The title, or let's say the thumbnail says it's over, okay? And I do believe that it's over on Etsy as we knew it, okay? It, it's not like it was a year ago, Five years ago, it's way different. So the good old days, it's over. Okay. 
The New Days, not bad, but it is different. And some people might look at that and go, thank you so much for sharing this. I don't want to touch it. Or thanks so much. Now I know I'm not just going to sell t-shirts because another uh, you know, person on uh, YouTube is saying you can still do that when I disagree. So just to kind of call that out as far as like clickbait, we need to get attention, by the way. And it looks like we did. And we're not misleading anyone in our in what we're saying here because we believe what we're saying. And we also know like there's also there is sunshine, you know, at the end of the rainbow, you know, you know, so like we're, we're okay. It's just, you need to be aware of this. If you're not, you're going to be like, why is this happening? Why can't I just sell t-shirts and mugs? That's why. Okay. So anyway, wanted to get that out there. All right, let's move on, Chris. Uh, oh, wait, before we do, uh, some people were asking about email, like, how do you do email? Um, how do you get started on that? We have a, a free guide that you can download. If you just put guide in the comments. We'll make sure that you get a copy. Chris, make sure that happens if you, if you will, um, for the people that are here live. And also if anybody's here on the replay, just in the comments, uh, just put email and then we'll make sure that you get that guide. If you are brand new and you need help with this whole figuring out your niche and products and building a brand, we actually put together what we call our hundred K roadmap. It's one that we followed to get to 100K. If you would like that, you can also get that in the comments. Just put a uh, roadmap, okay? Just put roadmap in the uh, in the comments and we'll make sure that you get access to that. Totally free, all right? So with that all being said, Chris, let's move on to the next thing we wanna talk about, which is in line with what we're talking about here, okay? And that is Etsy banning accounts within 24 hours and sometimes less. This here is, well, it's disheartening because people have had hopes that they were going to be able to sell on Etsy. And then all of a sudden they get banned and they don't even get an email that explains why it just says, sorry, after review, we're no longer going to let you sell. Here's the thing. This is happening more and more and more. Etsy publicly kind of admitted that this was happening, kind of, by them coming out with some things that they're going to be putting in place to make sure that the Etsy platform is safe and it is, well, it's being represented by sellers that are legitimate. And with that being said, I am going to bring up the actual article that was shared. And that's this right here. So it's the seller handbook, strengthening new shop onboarding to keep our community safe. All right. Now, let me just kind of go through this a little bit here and we'll just kind of bring it down. Well, let me just say this here in 2024, we're making updates to the onboarding process for new shops to ensure Etsy's a trusted place to shop and run a business. All right. So now, Let's kind of go through through a little bit of this. I'm not going to read the entire thing, okay? But the you can see here, okay, Etsy support, that's who this Brendan is, okay? He's been doing it for six years, okay? So let's get down here. We'll be making, let me highlight this. We'll be making these changes, okay, over the next few months, and they'll only apply to new created shops. Well, let's go up here real quick and see if I missed anything. Okay. We knew every order is an opportunity to make an impression on shoppers. And that's important to our business as it is to uh, ours. That's why in 2024, we're making updates. Uh, we're making updates to the shop onboarding process so we can better protect the, the amazing marketplace and community we've built together. Okay. Pretty much the same thing I already shared. Okay. So here's what we're looking at. If you decide, well, let me highlight, there we go. It, but if you decide to open an additional shop, your new shop could be subject to these new requirements, even if you've been selling on Etsy for a while. Okay, let's get down to the first one here. Adding an enhanced identity check to the shop setup process. We'll be introducing a new method of identity checks to the shop setup process so we know that the new shop owners are who they say they are. They'll be asked to upload a photo ID right here, like a driver's license or passport and taking a selfie using their computer or phone. 
To complete these checks, we've partnered with Persona, a third-party company certified to the highest industry standards for security. We prioritize working with vendors who share our values and put people first. And after vetting multiple potential vendors, our team feels confident Persona does both. So they're basically saying that's why we're using that company. Chris, why do you think they're doing this? Why is this their first check? Uh, that and, and do you think that this is part of the reason why we've seen such an outbreak in shops being banned? I think it's... I think this policy is actually a reaction to the outbreak of shops being banned because I think what they realized was when they they started coming down with the ban hammer at the end of Q3, beginning of Q4 last year when we had the, the mockopolyps, right? The mock-up apocalypse, uh, that they needed a better way of doing this and they couldn't just rely on AI to really figure out who was spamming, who was bombarding the platform, who was creating fake accounts, right? And by... Yeah verifying an actual physical ID up front, you know who is tied to that account. Now, how good is Persona at weeding out fake ID? We don't know, right. right? But at the very least, this is a nice check step on the front end for Etsy to be able to say, hey, look, this is a real person, right? There, It's not just an email address with a random social security number, which you literally could just type in a random EIN or social security number in the past. Yep. They're making sure that these things match, right? And adding that step in, I think makes a lot of sense. Now there's probably going to be some people in the comments who say, I don't want to give my ID over. Well, right. that, you know, that's up to you. Yeah. But if you want to be safe, it's not like you were ever anonymous on Etsy to begin with. Right. If you want to avoid some of the issues that are going on, I think this is a rational step. I'm not normally a fan of handing my ID over just for the heck of it. But in this case, right, if, if we're matching it to a person to verify who that person is, and those details aren't going to Etsy anyway, they're going to persona, yep. right, who is set up to do this, then I'm, I'm okay with this as a check step uh, yep. to make sure that it's tied to a person. Now, the thing that I would I would push back on here is, okay, if I'm a business, if I don't want to sell this in my name uh, and I want to sell it through the business, shouldn't I also be able to verify it with my EIN and like an SS4 or some sort of IRS yep. documentation uh, to verify it as the business? But mm -hmm. Etsy is designed more for individual sellers, at least still at this point. So that's kind of more of the approach that they're taking. Hopefully they'll expand yep. that to account for people who are doing this through a business entity and just think about it that way as well. But I, I've, I've used... I, I'm just saying, I, I'm personally like surprised that they haven't done this sooner. Like, I, I mean, honestly, I think it was kind of loose to be able to set up a shop. Uh, you know, there wasn't a ton of verification other than your banking and your address. So this is going to weed out some of the, of the scammers or the people that are uh, trying to get on the platform. Um, and is there going to be people that are going to be able to figure out a way around this? Maybe, but it's a lot harder. Um, so I, I, I think it's a good thing. I think the the other thing with this is theoretically, and I don't I don't know if Persona stores data or whatever, right? Because Etsy allows you to create multiple accounts, then they could more accurately track it back to a, a single individual to say, hey, this yeah. is this is Scott Volker, right? It's the same picture, more or less. And there's a lot of tools, a lot of AI tools now that say, okay, you know, you take a picture of somebody, you put it in, and it shows you every photo of them on the internet, right? Yeah. You can you can do that already. And so all they're doing is tying it back to an individual in case something weird happens. And that way, if they do find out that you're you're spamming or breaking TOS or doing whatever, they have kind of a full register of all of your accounts beyond yep. something like just an IP address uh, or a MAC address, right? Yep. Yeah, cool. All right, let's move on to number two. So this is the other check step that they're having here. Introducing a shop setup fee to support enhanced security and verification. I like it. I, I mean, I like this idea. Like. So many people though, Chris, and I'd like to know in the comments, who has a problem with this? Like who has a problem with a setup fee to start your business? Like, I, I don't know, Chris, I, I, I don't think this is a big deal, but a lot of people have been upset about it. Like how dare they charge us, you know, for a fee to sell on their platform. Do you know, we're doing them a favor, but well, they're kind of doing you a favor too. So I'm just curious in the comments, but let me just kind of go and read what they say here. We're committed to keeping, okay, they do the whole thing, keeping it safe and everything. And this is a, an enhanced security check uh, to, to support the new shops. We'll start, okay, this is the part I want to get to, okay? We will uh, start by introducing this fee to some new shops 
They'll pay a one-time setup fee of $15 before they can open for business. We clearly communicate if the fee applies during the shop setup process, the non-refundable upfront investment will help to ensure new shops are committed to running a business on Etsy. Okay, we talked about, about this before. Now, could they put a, a credit in place and say, hey, and we'll give you $5 credit towards Etsy ads? Maybe they will in the future. But this, this to me is it's so little of a thing to ask. And I think that is a good thing because now someone has to have banking connected that's act, that's going to be able to, or, or a credit card that's going to fund this thing. So you got to have a legitimate card. I think it's another great check, I personally think. Yeah, for me, I don't have a problem with the fee. And you, you just alluded to the point that I made when we talked about this when it first popped up, Yeah, which is I would rather, rather than them taking the $15 and just lighting it on fire, right. I would rather see Etsy long-term encouraging the use of different Etsy features. So take, you know, let's just assume that we have to pay $5, which is an unrealistic amount for that persona verification, yeah. right? That ID verification that we were just talking about. It's probably... A, a dollar at most, a couple pennies at scale, right? Yep. But let's just say that's five bucks. That leaves us with $10 that goes to Etsy. Why not give new sellers a $5 credit to Etsy ads? Why not give them a few free listings that is based on a dollar amount that comes out of this so that it does not feel like you're just taking $15 to create the account? It keeps that filter in place, which is what Etsy's using this for, right? They're saying it's not a huge barrier to entry, but it's enough that if you were thinking about creating a bunch of spam accounts and you did somehow get a bunch of fake IDs that were able, able to pass the persona verification, that it's going to cost you $15 to create all of those accounts, right? Yeah. Now, I'm okay with that, but I'd like to see them applying that on the back end to say, okay, if you are a serious seller, here's the things you need to invest in. You need to invest in some ads. You need to invest in this. You need to invest in that. So we're going to take the remaining portion of this fee and divvy it up across the different additional paid features or give them 30 days free of Etsy Plus, right? Something like that to get people started off, right? And to understand where that money is being uh, best spent. And it's not like it costs Etsy anything legitimately because you either give them the $5 in Etsy ads or they give you the credit that you've already paid for and they just reallocate that money down the road, right? But it feels nicer to sellers and it actually makes Etsy more money long-term because you're encouraging people to use the features, to create more listings, to run Etsy ads from day one. That to me makes a lot more sense than just charging $15 and saying, yeah, it's gone, right? Yeah. Not not opposed to the filter, just think there's a better use of it. Yeah, I, I think so. I think you're you're getting a little elaborate on, on how they can utilize it. Like if you were on the board, you'd be pitching these ideas and I think that's fantastic. But again, I, I, I don't think about it too much. It'd be like 15 bucks. Like, come on, $15 yeah. to open up a store. Like, come on, like this should have been happening years ago anyway. Like, okay, you're going to let me sell on your platform for $15. I mean, if you want to do a garage sale and it's a neighborhood garage sale, they're going to charge you for advertising. Oh, you, everybody's got to pitch in 10 bucks, right? Oh, really? You want me to pay so you can advertise? Like, come on. Uh, anyway, all right, let's let's not go down that rabbit hole. I, I I think it's great, Chris. I think those are great ideas. Um, maybe Etsy will listen. Um, I don't know. Um, okay, so the last thing is um exploring changes to payment schedules for new shops. Okay, so again, they go through the whole thing that they want to be able to you know create a better you know safer platform. Okay, but uh, basically what they're saying here is that their payment schedules for new shops until they have proven track record of sales on Etsy. Okay. So what they're basically saying is for brand new shops, they're not going to release the funds as quick as they have in the past. There's going to be like right now you can say, I want a payment every day. Okay. I want it once a week. Um, they're going to basically limit it and they're going to probably say we have to hold it for 30 days. Okay. And a lot of companies are doing that anyway. Okay. There's a lot of companies that are holding money for 30 days because they have to let refunds kind of work themselves out and, and all of that stuff. Um, so they're saying here, we're making these updates to help ensure sellers who are just getting started can fulfill their orders or provide refunds when needed. Okay. New shops will see their payment schedule right in their shop manager after they complete onboarding. Okay. So again, not a big deal. And it, it really shouldn't matter. What it should do is it should make you say, oh, Etsy is going to not have so many shops getting banned anymore because let me ask you this. If you had to do these three things and you were sure you weren't going to get that, I'm sorry, but your account's banned or you're suspended, would you do it? 
let me know in the comments. If you could do this and guarantee that you are not going to get that letter and you could just start selling and not have to worry about that, would you do it? Would you do your photo ID thing? Would you pay the 15 bucks? Would you wait 30 days to get your first payment? That's the big question. Would you do it? Because that's what I, I see that them trying to, to make it so they can eliminate all of the other stuff that's coming through so fast, right? This is going to slow things down a bit. It's going to take you a little bit to go get your license in, or if you're a scammer, you're not going to put your license in there, right? So I think it's a good thing. Let's, let's wrap this up, Chris, with what's next. Uh, and it says, we'll be introducing and testing out these changes over the next few months. And while we're working to raise the bar, uh, for new members of our community, we're equally committed to keeping them safe and helping them thrive once they're here. We'll continue to focus on education and adding protections to help sellers avoid scams that target new business owners. Okay. These updates are critical and keep our marketplace safe, yada, yada, yada. Okay. But it's mainly for new shops. So if you're a brand new shop, you're going to want to do all three of these. Okay. You're going to have to. And if you are, there's going to probably be a greater chance that you're not going to get that dreaded email or that message that says, Hey, Chris, sorry, man. You just opened up your shop 24 hours ago. We, we, we don't want you. We think you're suspicious, right? So that's the big thing. I, I think this is good news. I think this is a good thing. We'll see in six months from now. Did this help? Did we get less of that? Who knows? Hopefully we will. Um, I'd be curious in the comments though. You guys think this is a good thing. You think it's too much. Let us know. And Chris, what do you want to say? Last thoughts on this. So first, I think Etsy would be right to be suspicious of me. I'm a very shady person. Um, <laughs> but I think number three here is the one that I think got the most pushback from the seller community when it first came out. And it's also, to me, the most important one, because what we saw happening was, and th there was a ton of news articles on this at the end of last year, was, you know, somebody would be able to create a scam account. They'd create 400 of them, and then they wouldn't care because they could get paid out every day. And so if they yeah. got something that violated terms of service to rank, if they got something that was selling, they would still be getting paid every day. And if Etsy shut down the account, well, that's okay because they can't claw back from a bank account that doesn't have any money in it, right? right. And so you can go ahead and do that, but they have no way of protecting against it. So what Etsy is doing here, I think makes a lot of sense. And as long as the that restriction is reasonable, and I think when you and I talked about this, when the, the news first came out, we said something to the effect of like, all right, for 90 days or maybe 100 sales, right? Put a time limit or a sales limit. The sales limit probably makes the most sense because then it doesn't matter how long that account has been around. Yeah. It's 100 sales or 50 sales, right? Just to verify that they're fulfilling orders. I think that's okay. And I think the other thing that does, Scott, when we were talking about uh, your friend who had the email list and was afraid to send more emails, yeah. that should also eliminate that on the back end. Yeah. Right. So you don't have to worry about selling too much because Etsy has said, look, you've sold enough now that if you have a big spike in sales, we don't necessarily need the payment reserves anymore. Or they might send you an email and say, hey, you know, because you're selling so much, instead of paying you every day, we're going to automatically ship that to a week until your volume goes back to normal or mm -hmm. whatever it is. Right. But for new accounts who don't have that sales history, they were dragging down everybody else's account by making everybody else have to deal with the payment reserves because of this issue. Theoretically, this will help solve that. So I'm I'm a fan of that step for sure. Yeah, cool. All right, so that is what I feel some really good news for new Etsy sellers because now you should be able to open up your shop and you should be able to follow those three pieces of criteria or those checklists and you should be able to open your shop. So with that being said, Chris, we need to wrap this up with another segment here. And I say wrap it up, guys. Stay tuned. Do not go anywhere right now. We've got 500 plus people on here right now. And we need you right now because this is going to involve you, okay, each and every one of you. Okay, first thing you can do is like this video, okay? That's the first thing. Um, the second thing is get ready to leave a comment, okay? Because we want to get Etsy's attention. All right. So let me pull up my notes here. And our idea here is to create this segment here. We are going to then use this video as an independent video that is going to call out Etsy and sellers that are commenting are hopefully going to be heard, or at least it's going to, it's going to allow us to get attention. And if we get attention, we're going to be able to hopefully 
get attention from the CEO, Josh Silverman. All right. So I'm going to kick this thing off and then I'm going to, uh, we're going to get rocking and rolling here. Okay. Etsy sellers are upset and they have very good reason to be. There's a lot of things that have happened in the last 12 months where Etsy is not doing anything about it. The CEO, Josh Silverman, hopefully is going to see this message. If you are, Josh, hi, my name is Scott. Nice to meet you. There's an entire community of Etsy sellers who are trying very, very hard to sell products, create a livelihood off of the Etsy platform. Legitimately, the problems that we're seeing and that everyone is talking about is there's a lot of problems that are happening. One of them being Etsy accounts being banned, being shut down, not just new sites or new shops. It's ones that have had hundreds of thousands of sales and being shut down with no explanation. Now, there was one explanation that the one seller did get back and it was really shocking. And it really, if I was on the Etsy board of directors, I would want to know this. And Josh Silverman, if you ever do get to watch this, listen up because this is the livelihood of the platform. Okay. There was a gentleman who sold on Etsy. And I believe he's back on after three times being kicked off. Had over 120,000 sales selling dog collars. Great reviews. Great, great business. A great asset for the Etsy platform. Doing everything that Etsy wants him to do. Creating handmade, okay, just like the originals did, the OGs, handmade products, dog collars, 120,000 sales. He opened up a couple of other shops just to kind of try other things. One account got let go, just hadn't logged into it in a while. And he had an outstanding bill for like $8. Etsy shut all of his stores down, including the one that was 120,000 sales. And get this, it was just before Q4, which would have made him a lot of money. But guess what? It would have made Etsy a lot of money. Why? Why was he not able to get in front of, or to get on the phone with a human. All he got back was a template that was sent from probably a third party support VA in another country that was told, if you see someone's other account that's de delinquent, even if it's only by eight bucks, shut them down, all of them, ban them. Who, what business person thinks that that's okay? So our, our thing here, Josh and Etsy, if you're listening, Etsy sellers need to be heard. They need someone to talk to. I mean, Amazon has, they have people that they can talk to. If I have a problem with my account, I can call someone and get someone on the phone. There is no way that an Etsy seller can talk to a human being. So what we're doing here on this video is we're trying to get your attention. To let you know, we love your platform. We want to support your platform, but we want you to support us. And the way that you can do that is to give us live support. People that we can actually have a human conversation with. So right now, the people that are here, the sellers that are here, they're going to leave comments of their story. They're going to they're gonna basically sign something by dropping a comment. So guys, if you are watching, this is the time. Make sure that you let Josh Silverman, the CEO, or Etsy, or whoever's in charge over there. We want to be heard. We want support. We want to be able to talk to someone. If you suspend a listing, why? Let us know. What did we do wrong?
Okay. Where was the mishap? Because we can fix it if you let us know. And especially for accounts that have been open for a while, and then you go ahead and you just shut them down because there was an account that was set up three years before that, that was let go that you guys could clearly see no one's been selling on it. No one's been selling on it. And it's $8 delinquent. And you're like, you take it up amongst yourself, which you didn't, you had a, a bot do it. But if you had a human do it, they'd go, wait a minute here. Wait, whoa. $8 over here hasn't been active in forever. This account, not really doing anything. This account, 120,000 sales about to hit Q4. Last Q4, they did $300,000. Um, let's give them a call. Wouldn't that have been the better thing? Like in the comments, let Etsy know, let Josh Silverman know. Does something that they should be doing? Is that something that they should implement into the system? Okay. Now, Josh, I, I don't want to, I don't want to play it as, as I'm just bashing you. Cause I'm not, I think it's a great platform and I think you want to do well. And I love the gift mode. Everyone loves the gift mode. They love the energy that you're pouring into that, but we need the energy poured also into supporting the sellers with human beings that they can talk to. So our request here today, mine and everyone that is going to be watching this video, commenting on this video, this is our, this is our way of speaking out. And if you are watching this, anyone that is an Etsy seller and you want live support, you want to speak to a human, you want answers, now's your time. Drop it in the comments. Let, let them know your thoughts. What do you want to see them do to help you be more successful on the Etsy platform? So that's what I wanted to come here with. Chris, we can open up the discussion here and we can hear stories. And if you guys do have stories of what happened to you, drop them in the comments as well. I want this to be a resource. I want this to be a video that gets attention. So this way here, we can let Etsy know we're real people. And if you watched his video uh, for, uh, I believe, believe it was Tag Pup is the name of the brand. I think it's Val or Valve. Uh, no, I forget his name now. I, I don't want to screw up his name. Uh, but he supports his family using the proceeds from the shop, right? And the business that he's built to help Etsy become successful too. And then you just get wiped out just before the holidays. Man, that was a blow. So let us know in the comments if you got any, any stories that you want to share with the people and you want to be heard. Drop it in the comments and also make sure that you like this video because if you do, you are supporting it and you are also going to help us get more reach in the YouTube algorithm. All right, Chris, I know that was a lot there. I went on a little bit of a, of a, a little bit of a tangent, but I think it, I needed to speak up for the people. You had to get, you had to get something off your chest and there's, there's one addition I want to make to that Scott. And it's not just about having support because the argument and I think Josh would probably agree with me on this. Uh, I'm just going to pretend we're on a first name basis with the CEO, yeah. uh, Mr. Silverman, right? That that Josh would agree with us on is that, you know, they do offer support. You have chat. The problem is when you get someone on chat and there's been an, a lot of these issues recently, the people who are on chat support don't know Etsy's policies and actually give, and we have lots of examples of this, advice that is counter to the terms of service or totally incorrect based on what you say in the seller handbook. And so I know a lot of the concentration has been on seller education. And I think that's a good initiative to have, right? That's Scott, why you and I are here. We're here to help educate sellers. The thing you and I don't have any control over, right? We can help Etsy interpret their policies. We can help share how the SEO algorithm works by reading the documentation. The place where sellers have zero control is over where you give the education to the people working in the support department. If I can't get a reliable answer from somebody at support as to why my account was suspended, as to whether or not I should duplicate a listing for a specific reason, as to whether or not it's okay to sell a product uh, that is explicitly banned somewhere in your handbook as a type of product that I can't sell on the platform and, and chat support tells me it's fine. And then you suspend my account. Well, that's because you've given me bad advice and you're missing the education portion of this on the inside. So as much as I'd like to have phone support and as much as I think that is important moving forward, 
the most important portion of this to me is to have knowledgeable support staff. And I think the focus on AI here has been in the wrong direction, right? The, we've, at least from an outward appearance, Scott, where Etsy has really been relying on AI is to help them manage things at scale, right? So they're forcing you into a chat bot and maybe eventually you get to a human being after you scream, give me a person, give me a person, give me a person 400 times. And where they're focusing their, their AI efforts right now are on the chatbot, are on avoiding the support tickets and on trying to manage things. And I know we have a lot of things to manage at scale, but with all of the opportunities to have AI, can we not create an answers database for the support people so that when you ask a question about something that is located somewhere in the seller handbook, that they don't give an incorrect answer? I think the answer is yeah. And it's really not even that complex of a task to do if you're focused on the right things. And this is not to say that Etsy's doing everything wrong, right? There's a lot of things that you are doing right as Etsy, as the CEO of Etsy. The problem is we're focusing on all of the growth, the growth initiatives, taking more of the gifting market, great goal, but we're forgetting and we're forsaking a lot of the things that are important to the people who make the platform, who are not just the buyers, but the sellers. And we're giving a lot of lip service to sellers saying, hey, we're making these things better. And we, you, you are making improvements on the back end. The problem is you're missing the most important portion and it seems to be getting worse, not better. And Scott, I know you've seen a lot of videos over the last few weeks come out about people having weird chat interactions. I know we've seen a few pop up of people just getting completely wrong answers. That should never happen. No. And it's entirely preventable. If we focus just a few dollars and a little bit of resources on creating a actual database that real human beings can access and give you the answer when they need to, or give you more follow-up on that when you have a follow-up question and not just copy and paste from a section. Yep. And I know there's probably a legal answer in there somewhere. Well, we can't tell you exactly what you did because it opens up a liability. Then you've written your terms of service incorrectly. If they are not readable by a human being, if they're not understandable by a human being, and we have to sit around and wonder what's going on, then you've done it incorrectly. And what we should be seeing from a support perspective is a human readable way and a human conversation for us to understand what is okay, what isn't, what happened, what didn't, right? We're not asking for the sun and the moon. All we're asking is for the ability to communicate with a human being who actually knows the answers to the platform's most common questions without having to do some weird Google translate that then changes the meaning of the actual answer. So again, it's not to say that they're not doing anything correctly. They're doing a lot of things well for sellers, but we're dropping the ball on the most important thing. And that's why, that's the real reason, Scott, that I believe sellers are leaving the platform. It's not about Timu. It's not about pricing. It's not about those kinds of things. Yep. It's that people are afraid their business is going to get pulled away. And if they have a problem, there's no way to go. There's yep. nowhere to turn. And if they do get a human being, they don't know what the policies are. And right. there's a good chance they get a wrong answer that then leads them down a worse path uh, and and takes them from somebody who might be suspended or get you know their first IP flag to somebody who gets automatically suspended because somebody in support said it was okay to sell that design. And it clearly has Mickey Mouse all over it or something right. like that. Yeah, yeah. No, again, like we want this here to be you, your voice. So this way here, hopefully we get the attention of Etsy the big guys, the big girls, whoever's running it over there. I know Josh Silverman is, you know, he's the, the, the CEO. So he's the top technically, but there's other people pulling the strings there too. So we just need to get attention and now is your chance. So if you want your voice to be heard, you will want to comment on this video. You'll want to like this video, share it with anyone that you feel could help get the word out. You see, if we get more attention to this video, you are going to be able to potentially get the attention of who we need to really, really at least bring it up at the board meeting. That's all. I just want to see at the board meeting. So whoever has that, that ability, I want to talk to that person. It, and it's probably not Josh. It's probably going to be someone else, maybe even three levels down that can bring it to the board go, Hey, we got to talk about this. You know, there's a lot of sellers that were on this one video and they're calling out that they need this and they need that. That's what we want. Okay. So like this video, comment on this video, share your story as much as your story as you can. 
put it in a comment. So this way here, if they want to use it, they can, and they can go ahead and share it with the board. Um, that's the main goal here today for what we wanted to do here. And hopefully we are successful at it. And we're not going to stop, by the way. If this video doesn't do it, we'll do another one. All right. And we're just going to keep doing them. So this way here, we can hopefully get a little bit more human support. And I know it might be a human on the other end, but like someone said in the comments, it's just like a robot because they're just copy and paste, copy and paste. We want to actually have a have a conversation with dialogue to let them look at our specific listing, our specific shop, our situation, and not just a carbon copy. Okay. And just a copy paste. All right. So if you want to be heard, leave a comment, like this video, share it with as many people as you can. So this way here, we can go ahead and well, as Etsy sellers, we can be heard. All right, Chris. We've got about eight minutes and then I got a hard stop. All right. We did good, Chris. Oh, we did good. But before we jump into Q&A, I wanted to share this because this is an excuse and this is going to set me off for a minute. This is the excuse that we got from Meta uh, a few years ago when they shut our ads account down because you were traveling. I think you, you went to like South Carolina or something. They're like, oh, you're scamming IPs right. because apparently flights don't exist. Yeah. Um, and they said, oh, well, they can't tell you why they're suspending things because people will circumvent the policy. For lack of a better term, that's a load of bull hockey, right? I'm not going to swear. I don't think I've ever actually used that word in real life until just now because I don't want to get, you know, I don't want to get us yeeted off YouTube, but I do want to go on this rant. If you have a human readable policy and it makes sense, you don't have to worry about people going around it. You don't have to carve out all these exemptions. What's okay? This is okay. This is not. There's not a lot of gray area in these policies anyway. Are you using a VPN? Don't use a VPN. You can write that in English. Instead of saying, well, maybe sometimes if you have an IP address that's different, we might suspend your account and that could be why. Yeah. You're not giving any insight into whether it's against policy or not by saying you violated this policy. That is just common sense and yeah. not giving sellers at least, you know, page eight, right? Which is what Facebook does, which is still totally inadequate. If, if you're giant legal team cannot figure out how to do this. And I think Colin, Colin stretch, which is a great name. I hope he's like nine feet tall, uh, is their chief legal officer. If your legal team can't figure out how to write a human readable terms of service that can't be exploited by telling people when they violate the terms of service, how they violated the terms of service, mm. then you're doing something wrong, right? Like we, this is not rocket surgery. Just that you can sell this type of thing. You can't sell, you can sell t-shirts. You can't sell sweatshirts. I don't know how me telling you uh, that you sold a sweatshirt. And so that's a policy violation, how that helps you avoid it the next time. Because guess what? If your account's banned, they now have your ID, they have your IP address, they have your banking info. So you're not going to create an account. You're not going to create all these other accounts and just start spamming the platform with things that you learned along the way, because guess what? They're all written out in the human readable terms of service that we're talking about here. So it doesn't have to be the end of the world to get at least a point in the right direction, but you do owe sellers something. And what you owe sellers is an explanation as to what's going on. Because without sellers, unlike Amazon, who has stolen a bunch of stuff uh, from people who are selling well to create Amazon basics, Etsy doesn't create any products. So every dollar that is earned by Etsy is earned from a seller, whether it's a listing fee or a percentage of sale or an advertising dollar. All of that comes from sellers and you need to keep sellers in mind with everything that you're doing. And we can put up with a lot. We can put up with new competition. We can put up with changing terms of service. We can put up with changing fees. We can put up with all those things as long as there is open and honest communication with the people who made the platform. That's all. I yep. I want to get down off my high horse now and answer. A yeah, few get down, get ahead. down. Uh, yeah. Okay. So uh, again, we wanted this to be obviously a helpful, a helpful live today, which I think in the very beginning we talked a lot about like the big changes that have happened, and you know a lot of them you could look at as negative and maybe they are in, in some way, but we also covered what we would do, uh, to utilize the platform still and continue to do it in 2024 and beyond. Uh, and that is building out a brand, building out a product line, building your email list, and really allowing yourself the ability to be able to take that and then bring it over to your own Shopify uh, site or Wix or website, whatever you're going to use, you can bring over all of your stuff. If you would like a roadmap, a blueprint, if you will, on how we've done that, 
Uh, we've documented it and we put it into a guide called the 100K Roadmap. And uh, you can download it for free. Um, just go ahead and put uh, in the uh, in the comments, just put Roadmap. If you put Roadmap in there, we'll go ahead and make sure that we send you a copy of that. The other thing I saw a lot of questions coming in, Chris, about email. Like, how do I build an email list? You guys are talking about email. Um, we also have a guide for that. We are huge on email. Like, to me, like, that's number one thing you should be focusing on uh, after you get yourself up and running. There's obviously a process. Um, but if you would like access to that, it's our email marketing playbook for Etsy, a way for us to build our email list at the same time. Um, make sure that you just drop guide in the, uh, or I'm sorry, put email, email in there. That way we'll know what, what guide to send you email. Um, if you put email in the comments, we'll make sure that we, uh, that we send you a copy of that as well, which is very detailed. And, uh, that one there is really, uh, in depth and it kind of goes through everything that we've done to increase traffic and sales. Um, so if you'd like a copy of that, just drop it in there, uh, email in the comments. And once again, let, let, Etsy no by dropping a comment in there. And hopefully this will, this will see the light of day. And maybe we just need one person from Etsy to go, Hey, we, we got to talk about this. That's all we need. Okay. And we're going to keep going until we are, uh, you know, being heard. And Chris and I are hoping that we're going to be the ones that brought this thing to the board. And we said, we were able to make a difference by adding some real human interactive support. Don't know if it's going to happen this year. But we're going to try like heck because I think it's really, really important. And I think if Etsy knew the importance of how this is impacting their sellers, I think they would do it in a heartbeat. But I don't think they're listening that well um, and they need to start. So hopefully this episode is going to get them to listen. Maybe. Chris, anything you want to wrap up with or are we good to go? Uh, White Yellow Gold said, watch, you'll get your shop suspended or banned for doing this. Lot. If that happened... That would be the biggest joke, and we would come on and do a video about it until the end of time, yeah. right? Like, if if pointing out the problems with the platform is a problem, then Etsy has bigger problems than than what it appears. That'd and be a heck of a news have, story, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I, we haven't violated terms of service ever yeah. that I'm aware of, yep, right? No. And we do everything we can to abide, yeah. even though they're not human readable. Uh, Elysian says you have to raise the negatives to lift the whole platform to a positive end bring back the glory date. And that's what this is about. I don't want this to be a live stream about hating on Etsy. It's about how we can do better. There's a lot of things that are changing. And if Etsy can make a few, these, these really aren't like world shifting changes, no. right? More education for the people who are helping sellers. That's really what we're asking for here. And an easier way to reach somebody who actually understands Etsy's terms of service and can yep. help us with a question or help us solve something on the back end without having to go through nine levels of a robot. I don't think that's too much to ask uh, or just at least make the robot know what it's supposed to know, right? Like give me the right answer. That's all right. that we're asking for. Pedro says question regarding email lists. I'm collecting emails from all my customers that buy from me. Uh, they haven't signed up. So if you're still doing that, that's not compliant with Etsy's terms of service at this point. No. They do have to opt in and most countries have opt in email. The U S is actually an exception, uh, an exception to that where it's typically opt out, but you want them to opt in. And if you're scraping right. emails or something from Etsy at this point, that is something that you want to try to avoid. See, we're not just screaming about the things Etsy is doing wrong. We're talking about all of these other things. Uh, there's less than five knowledgeable and, and ethical Etsy coaches on YouTube and Scott and Chris are two of them. Thumbnails are just part of reaching people. So it's okay. Awesome. Uh, fatty pancake says good high horse. Chris agree with it a hundred percent. Um, and can we regionally ban sales on Etsy? This came up during the, the conversation about China. And if you're not, if you don't have shipping set up to them, then it wouldn't sell to that country. Yeah. You can't stop somebody from going through like a shipping, a shipping forwarding service that lives in that country, but you don't really need to worry about that anyway. Cool. All right. Well, I think this was great. We had well over 550 people on here at one time. I don't think that's our record, but it's darn close. And I want to thank each and every one of you that are still here, over 467 people still here on this live. And I want to thank each and every one of you. And again, let us know in the comments your story. Like, let us know your story. Maybe we'll even dive into your story. Maybe we'll share it. We'll try to highlight it. So this way here, we bring attention to this problem. All right. And, uh, and hopefully we can get, we can get this fixed. Um, that that's our goal. That's, that's our, that's our mission. All right. Um, the resources, like I said, we'll drop them all in the description. There'll be more too. We've got other, uh, 
you know, other resources, other guides and things that we share for free. Um, we also have some paid stuff too. We'll drop that in the, in the description as well. We have our backstage pass club, which is going to be uh, happening here next Thursday. Um, another batch of Etsy shop audits. If you'd like to be part of that, I'll put a little shameless plug here, brandcreators.com forward slash club. And you can join us and we will dive into, well, you'll see us dive into three Etsy shops. Um, and, uh, they've been very, very, uh, well received. It's been a, been a really great experience too. Um, so we batch record them and then they go up on the YouTube channel. Um, every Thursday we, we launch a new one. So, um, if you're not subscribed to the YouTube channel, make sure you subscribe. You're going to get some goodies. All right. So that's it guys. I got to run. I actually have to go and, uh, watch my daughter play some beach volleyball, which is always fun. So I'm going to enjoy that. The sun's out. So it's going to be a good day. All right, guys, take care, take action. We'll see you next time.